right, so it's a quick video to show you guys how to effectively remove this heat sink on top of these boards. Um, so you'll have a few here, one, two, three, four, there's a fifth one down there. So we got one, two, three, four, actually five and six. So we have six. This one's not needed. This one, these two are over there. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So the first step is basically put some flux and some low melt solder on these joints over here. Now you're gonna mix it with this leaded solder or whatever type of manufacturer solder they use out of the manufacturing process in the facility. So I like using the low melt solder because it helps it melt it a lot easier when you're soldering it. And we're actually not even gonna use a solder wick. We're just gonna overfill it with solder here at these points and we're gonna slowly push the heat sink out one by one. So I'll show you in a minute. So we're gonna start here. We're going to tin our tip Make sure it's nice and shiny. We're gonna set this soldering station up pretty high because we wanna make sure it's nice and melted. Uh, so about 400 is fine, 405 Celsius. It's more than okay. These boards are meant to handle more than that. So that's good to go. All right, so first step, we're just gonna basically coat this guy. Low melt solder. Trying to stay away from it. I don't want the fumes to get next to me. These things smell horrid. So we're just gonna melt it on all sides here. There we go. That looks good. Hold it there for a few seconds just to make sure it's getting hot enough so it's completely liquid for a few moments. Cool. So what we did there, we're going to do for the rest of them. So I'm just going to put some low melt solder on the rest of them and then just touch it up with the soldering iron that I set at about 400 degrees Celsius. And there's going to be six of these little posts here holding it together so you don't wanna miss one. All right, let's go through it one by one. Okay, so now that we have successfully added solder to each one of those posts, We're gonna start back here. We're gonna see if it is able to give a little bit from this. So we're gonna push down, see if we can start separating it. And this does take a while, so you have to be patient. There's no real fast and easy way to do this. I wish there was. But this requires some patience and some skill. So you see that now it's starting to move. So that's perfect. We just want to put a little pressure on there. Nothing too crazy. We don't want to make. We don't want to you know break the board, of course. So we're going to slowly start inching our way through each one of these solder joints one by one, and we want to make sure they're loose enough just to get some wiggle room. So hold it there until, boom. Sometimes you can hear a little, little pop. Doesn't mean you have broken the traces. It just means that the solder is finally given and it is free from the board, which is perfect. That is the first step of getting this thing off. So again, patience. You wanna keep holding it there until we can see it move. Boom, you can push on it. You see it move a little bit, which is awesome. 
All right, so that's three down, three more to go. This one here is right in the middle. This one may not be able to see much movement because it's right in the middle of all the, uh, the tension. Cool, we'll come back to that one. Let's move on the edges again. Boom, that's perfect. That was pretty easy. All right, this one over here. What I'm doing on this side is I'm actually putting some pressure with my finger, just slowly trying to push it up. All right, since those two have the posts out a little bit, I'm gonna go back to the middle to see what I got. Boom. You can hear a little pop, so that's perfect. So we're just gonna repeat that process. So one by one, each one of these posts, all six, you wanna get it as flush as possible to there. And then once we get it pretty much all the way out, then we can start using a solder wick, clean up our holes, make sure they're nice and clean. Um, but go, let's go ahead and just speed this up so when all these posts are flush with the board. So now these ones are all pretty much flush with the board, or a little bit more than flush, which is good. And you can see now that we're getting somewhere. You can see that the heat sinks are now separating from the chips that we need to work on. You see we have lifted this little post up, um, maybe like three millimeters, two millimeters. Doesn't seem like a lot, but we're nearly there. So we're gonna keep working on it. We're gonna keep pushing these posts out one by one, and then we'll clean up the rest of the solder with some solder wick. Cool, half of the board is free. So let's keep working from outside to inside. That is how we do it. Basically, patience is key. Slowly maneuvering these posts one by one out of this, um, what can seem to be a very time consuming repair, but the first step is done. Um, so now let's finish up this video by showing how we're going to clean up these holes here. So you wanna clean up our mess. We don't wanna leave it like this, of course. So let's go ahead, tin our tip again. We're gonna put some flux on these areas. Just a little bit, freshen it up a little bit, nothing too wild. And then we're gonna to want to use some solder wick here. Let me see if I can cut a new strip off. This part is old, we don't want that. And for people that don't know, solder wick is basically braided copper wire and it has dried flux already in it. So it helps absorb the solder from these joints. So that's one. Using the base of the soldering iron helps you get more of the solder absorbed to the wick. You can roll it a little bit here and there, lift it up. 
Let's see what happens. Boom. All right, three done. Let's do three more. Cool. I think we don't like putting the solder point into the hole, but sometimes it does help free up all the rest of the access solder that is hard to get. Okay. All right, we're on our last two holes here for cleaning. The last one here. And if you're not getting good heat transfer, if it's not burning, definitely look at your soldering tip. It's probably dull and it's not conducive to heat transfer. So always look at that to make sure you're tending your tip regularly. So that's a huge one for people that are just starting out. Cool. So all these holes are pretty much, for the most part, solder free. Now what we're gonna do next is just use some alcohol and some cotton swabs and we're gonna clean up the access flux. Bobs. This is 99%. Very strong stuff. I recommend it. You just want to go around like that and it'll circle. These ones get dirty pretty quick. I just toss them and grab a new one. And be careful where you're cleaning because when you're in the middle of the board, make sure there's no small components that you're going to knock off while cleaning. That's a big one. The heads on these, these are pretty big, so they require a good amount of free space. Luckily for us, there's no real small components near the holes, at least right up against them. So. We got a few millimeters for the next one, so it's perfect. Awesome. Last two to go. one boom so cleaned up all these solder holes here so now the board is nice and clean um i'll just continue to show you the prep work for this because i have another video showing what we do when um we throw it in the hot air rework station. So next I do, I move on to this guy, the heat sink. So I wanna make sure the heat sink, all the excess solder is also off these posts because you want it nice and clean so you can put it back on the board once it is, once the work's all finished, you know? So what I do here, I just wrap around little post put the soldering iron next to it and it slowly absorbs perfect 
This is one, nice and clean. Go ahead and chop off some extra that we don't need here. done three done and once you get in the groove you can make this pretty quick this process doesn't take long at all we got four done Five done, last one, last one, best one. Cool. These look pretty good, may need one more touch up, but let's do a quick test. Let's see if we're able to put this back on nice and easy. So we do got some. That need reworking. So these three, these three look great. Just these last three here need some more work. Yeah, I could definitely see it. But that was the general idea, so we're gonna clean this up one more time, make sure these posts fit back in these holes. So after we're done working on here, it's an easy application, solder them back together, and all that good stuff, okay? Perfect. So for sake of moving on the video, we'll go to the next step. Next step is cleaning the heat sinks. Don't think I went over this in the last video. But first we'll start with the chips, then we'll clean the heat sinks. So you want to use that alcohol again. I'm going to remove this nasty thermal paste. It was on here from factory, because it's old and crusty. It doesn't work too well. So you just want to take your time and slowly remove this awful factory applied thermal paste. Sometimes you need to break it up a little bit because it's really tough to get off. Cool, we'll call that one done. <clears throat> I'm going to need some more Q-tips. Then we can work on that one. this one off.
found the problem. Divisio. <laughs> Not just kidding. All right, we're going to continue cleaning. Boom, 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 boom. and boom chips are clean sometimes you can even do a um, preliminary inspection and you can look right down in these chips here these little uh, solder joints and you can see if it's uneven if there's some that are dull looking, some that are more shiny, and typically you'll find that they are. Nine times out of 10. Okay, so we're done cleaning these up. Now let's go to the heat sink as we have to clean both sides. See, this is why they fail. It's like a very sad amount of thermal paste. It's very sad. Need to do this until all this old stuff is gone and we're ready to apply the new stuff. Boom, there we go. Clean, clean, and have not done the rework yet because like I mentioned it's already shown in the last video I'll just show you beginning to end the removal of the heat sink the cleaning of the heat sink and the reapplication of the new reworked heat sink so let's take a step back imagine that this is already fixed and I'll show you how to put the new thermal pads and thermal paste on here all right you'll need two things you'll need some pads and some paste. So what I like to do here, basically measure out these chips. See exactly how big they are. And then once we measure them, we can then apply them. So, boom, it looks about right, right? We're not done. So now I'm gonna take an indentation of what we need to cut out. We need to make the middle exposed. Indentations there. I don't know if you can see it. We're just gonna cut around that indentation of where the actual chip sits. Presentation is cut out. We're just going to remove that guy. Now we're going to remove this from this side. Cool. And then we're going to put it over here. It's like a Snuggie for a chip. And I made that one up myself. Okay. I don't see a lot of people doing this, but 
That's kind of what I do to each one after I'm done to ensure repeat filler does not happen. So the fact that it is now level with the chip, uh, and I believe the thickness on these is about one millimeter. Um, if you guys want, I can link everything that I bought uh, pretty much all on Amazon in the description below. So uh, if you guys want me to just drop some comments and I'll make sure I'll link all the products I've used. Um, so moving on, I make sure this is the exact height of the chip, which is great. So when this heat sink sits on top of here, it is now nice and flush. And then what I do on top of this, I add thermal paste back on this guy. And once the thermal paste is on there, it's gonna add another layer. So now that it's now even for heat transfer, which is good, because now the whole chip is making contact and not just part. We're gonna put thermal paste on there. It's gonna go down here in these little empty slots there. And it's gonna keep cooling at a minimal, minimal temperature. So I'm gonna do the same thing on this chip here. So really there's no need for me to record it. It's the same thing, copy and paste, boom. And they're gonna put it back and then we do the exact same thing, but in reverse. <clears throat> so if you guys don't know how to put this back on, um, I don't know what to tell you because it's pretty straightforward. If you gotten this far, then I have full faith in you. Just solder the posts, make sure that they are making contact on each little, I'm gonna call these like nubbins, is making contact to the chips, nice and flat, keep it nice and even, and then slowly turn it over and then solder each point that you have. Cool, so that's it for this video. I hope this is kind of a full video between the last one and this one showing you how to both uh, prepare, remove heat sink, and prepare it for reapplication and reinstallation. And the last video shows pretty much the nitty and gritty of how to repair this board. Any questions, again, leave comments in the description below, and I'll do my best to link all these items. If I don't, leave comments and I'll do it eventually. Thanks, guys.